Well, you know, uh, a dude I know in Detroit, uh, his cousin had just killed himself last the other day. He, uh, he overdosed on some medication. I think he has some uh, PTSD related issues from when he served overseas in Iraq. Uh, when the brother was describing some of the stuff his cousin was dealing with, I knew exactly what he was dealing with because I was dealing with the same exact things. And it was compounding the conversation that I had with Nicole yesterday. Because I was telling her that, you know what I'm saying, I get to the point like I really don't even really care about nothing no more. <coughs> Which is a law of uh, acknowledgement of knowing that I'm dealing with a strong manner of depression. I know I done dealt with it before, at least three times before now in my lifetime. Other three times I just dealt with it by myself. I think on this time I've been, well I know it's been bothering, bothering her because a lot of times I was talking to her, leaning on her, and she didn't really understand uh, why I might have been saying some of the stuff that I was saying. It's a, uh, <coughs> it's a very difficult thing because I know Pell just was just mentioning about it, how to say something about it. Because with depression it's more of a battle with your own mind that you and your own thoughts. And usually, most of the time, people don't really realize or recognize when you're dealing with it. Because uh, they think you're just down or you're just sad. They don't really realize how, uh, how serious it can be. Because it'd be like all your hope, like everything gets sapped up out of her. It's mainly because T had asked me the other day why I was so angry. And usually, uh, when you're going through that, you usually lash out. It's usually not anger that you really got directed <coughs> towards that individual or nothing like that, but that's usually how it comes out. I had went and looked it up probably about a month or so ago, but I kind of already knew it. But then I look at some of the stuff that's in it, the symptoms are, and I know that it was uh, like apathy, like really not really caring, uh, the discontent, the guilt, the hopelessness. Like I told you yesterday, I don't feel pleasure in doing nothing no more. Going to the gym I ain't going to the gym to have fun no more, just something to do. This week here was pretty rough. I told, I told you last night, when that dude gave me them insurance quotes, them life insurance quotes, it just really hit the, the nail on the head that a lot of stuff that I had been planning, it's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then truthfully, because of the depression, that's what pushed her even further away. You know what I'm saying? Then not really able to express that to her and tell her what that is that you're dealing with. Didn't make it no better. So then you're looking at what I'm gonna get life insurance for, who I'm gonna lead something to. I ain't got nobody to lead nothing to. Then we were dealing with all this stuff business-wise and all that type of stuff, which was getting me uh, even more frustrated. And then you got a, a strong, strong level of discontent. Uh, then it was like, say, mood swings and the sadness, and then just like I said, I be getting up real early in the morning. I really can't go to sleep. Uh, I wake up periodically throughout the night. I don't really have no desire to eat. Hello? 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 What's going on, Bill? Like, like, I don't really have no desire to eat, get agitated a lot. I ain't did much crying in a while. I'm usually always by myself. I told her I usually, uh, I can go probably about 24 to 36 hours without having no human contact, like actually having a conversation. My concentration ain't bad, but it's getting that old. And also the, the constantly recycling the thoughts. So then when I look at this other thing on here, uh, One thing I noticed this here too, because that's what the brother was telling me what his cousin was too, because I can remember T saying this to me like, uh, you was just straight yesterday, and now you acting crazy. And it made me think about Robin Williams when he's supposed to kill himself. That most people who, uh, who deal with depression and deal with stuff like that, they can cover up what they feeling very, very well. You know what I'm saying? That they can appear to be the happiest person that you've ever seen in your entire life, 
and as if there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. You know what I'm saying? Well, then when in actuality, they dying on the inside. Uh, you go to thinking about death quite a bit. One of the other things they sit back and they mentioning that you go to state and you know it was better if you wasn't here or you weren't out. Now they sitting back saying that these things are, are warnings of suicide. Uh, when it comes to suicide, uh, I say that uh, the brother told me he came in there, man, to his cousin house and seen his cousin had all his guns just laid out in the middle of the floor. Uh, and he say that troubled him. And the thing was is he say him and another one of his cousins and the boy mama were like, uh, they could see that he wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't really go versus the check on him. And the only reason why they found him dead is because uh, he was late on his rent. And the landlord would come in to see about that. You know what I'm saying? I say, man, when you're dealing with something like that, man, it's a, like a battle in your own head. And usually a lot of times when the person is reaching out to say something to people about it, they usually go to just thinking that they tripping or they're just going overboard. But I'm telling you from personal experience, it's a, uh, it's a very, very draining thing. Like, it'll be times I don't even want to get up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? That I'm doing stuff just off the basis of that I have to do it. That if it were possible, I wouldn't do nothing at all. You know what I'm saying? Like your whole motivation and hope just drifts away. And ain't no telling how long it takes. And then the people tell you that uh, the way that they try to get you to get over it is they want to give you drugs, which the brother was telling me they gave his daddy. His daddy had some pain medication. The only way they would give him the Xanax was with the, uh, he had to take antidepressants with it. He said, and Mr. taking them antidepressants and gave him suicidal thoughts. So he was like, you know what, you could just keep the, uh, the Xanax and I'll just deal with the pain in another fashion. A lot of times when you see all the mass shooters and all that type of stuff, they be on that type of medication. Cause they don't want to give you antidepressants for depression and they want to give you electroshock therapy, put some old progs on your, on your head and shock your brain. You know what I'm saying? Or they'll tell you to go talk to a, uh, a psychiatrist. Do you know what I'm saying? A lot of times when you're dealing with somebody who in that's a lot of stuff that people, like this time you could be sad, right? Everybody is going to have a period of being sad, but being sad and being depressed are two different things. Like the brother was telling me his cousin was like, because his cousin wasn't dealing with the word. He was trying to get his cousin to deal with the word. He said his cousin was like, was there any hope for him to be saved? Now whatever he did in Iraq, only he, he, the people who were with him, and y'all know what he did. You know what I'm saying? But then he was dealing with just certain factors in his life that were going on at the time. It was draining him. It was taking him down. You know what I'm saying? So, usually, well, uh, people who get caught up and taken down with depression are usually highly intelligent people, usually strong people, usually people who think a lot, too. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot more prevalent, especially with black people, because we were talking about this last night. Especially with black people, it's a lot more prevalent with black people than black people like to acknowledge. You know what I'm saying? Black people kill themselves in a higher rate than black people like to acknowledge. It's three things that black people don't like to acknowledge. They don't like to acknowledge child molestation, they don't like to acknowledge depression, and they don't like to acknowledge suicide. They like to acknowledge that those things are white people issues. You know what I'm saying? Therefore, when we see somebody who is actually considered to be clinically or severely depressed, we really don't know what to say to them or handle handle with them. And you look at our people as a whole, we come out the womb with the chances of being traumatized to be depressed because of the land that we live in and the stuff that we got to deal with and overcome. You know what I'm saying? I was telling, uh, telling Travis yesterday, like, you could put somebody in the same situation it was basis like I was talking about last night with that, that crip thing. That's what it was. When that dude was talking, you know, everybody ain't that strong. You know what I'm saying? Some people can be depressed and they'll be strong enough where they're not going to not gonna kill themselves. You know what I'm saying? Now, other people ain't. Usually when most people do it, probably just like in 
the, the young brother there who just did it. Only one number, 24 years old. Uh, you go to feeling alone. And then usually when you're in your thoughts all the time, you feel even lonelier. You know what I'm saying? So then you get to go to thinking of there's no purpose or rhyme or reason for you to even be on this earth. Then you go to thinking like that, you can just go ahead and do it. He went a different track from what I done looked at. You know, there'd be like most women don't use lethal means to kill themselves. You know what I'm saying? Men are used more powerful means to do it. He had plenty of guns in the house. He chose to take medication. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just telling you from personal experience, it's a real, it's a, it's a real live series matter. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that time period with that war, that was from June 2002 I dealt with that depression, man. I think I ain't come up out of it till probably about March 2003. Like straight up and down. Took a very, very long time. To where the people on the outside who were around me at the time, they just thought, man, they ain't know what was wrong with me, I don't know which. You know what I'm saying? They just be like, man, all saying itself, he'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? This, that, there, and the third. A lot of times when somebody try to come comfort you and tell you something, they really don't don't really serve no purpose. You know. I thank y'all for the work, cause ain't no telling what I do without that. Hello? What's happening with you? Uh, there's definitely no telling what, what I've been undid without that. Because the mind just go to drifting. But I knew when it was getting to the point where thoughts was coming to my head like, I don't care no more, that's not good. I think that's what his cousin was feeling like. I don't think I got the, uh, I don't think I could go as far as what he did, but I know what he was feeling, you know what I'm saying? Without ever speaking to the man or seeing him before in my life, I know what he was feeling. You know what I'm saying? That's a uh, that's a level of despair that very few people probably ever experience in their lifetime. You know what I'm saying? We done talked about that stuff before, man, about, you know, men in the word that were desiring to die, they weren't necessarily going to take their own life, but they were ready to leave you. You know what I'm saying? And you can, you know what I'm saying? We read a couple things about sorrow last night, you know, from the perspective of Job, then look at it from the perspective of uh, from Jeremiah. But like when we look at, uh, when you look at like what Hamashiach said before, it was time for him to die, that he was exceedingly sorrowful even under death. For something to exceed, that means that's great. So for all intents and purposes, that's a great sorrow. To use these people medical terms, that's like a, almost a form of depression. You know what I'm saying? Because when he's sitting back looking at let this cup pass and all these things, it's a sense of hopelessness. You know what I'm saying? When, when that type of, like I've seen that in the street. Not necessarily that dudes want to kill themselves or nothing, but that sense of hopelessness. That you feel like there's nothing out here for you. There's no reason for you to be alive. There's, uh, that there's no hope for anything good or well to go in your direction. That everything you seem to touch goes wrong. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the times when somebody is going through something like that, they're going through that by themselves. You know what I'm saying? And it makes it a lot worse because some, I say, man, I navigated that, that last time for about nine months by myself. It wasn't easy. Do you know what I'm saying? But it got through it. I think this one here, I've been in this one here probably about five months. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's been times where I done told y'all before, I done came in here, whatever. Like, man, I didn't want to be here. If I would have had a choice, I wouldn't even came. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even had no desire. I just say that there because I know T said to me yesterday, well, you'll feel better after you get it finished preaching. And I'm like, no, I won't. You know what I'm saying? So when somebody hear that, that could be draining to them. If they not understanding that for that time period while you're doing it, you're not thinking about it, whatever you're thinking about. But once it's over, it comes back to your brain. Do you know what I'm saying? And then you write back to being in solitude, being in your own thoughts, and basically a prisoner in your own mind. And you rehashing all this type of stuff in your head. You know what I'm saying? One of the things on here, but hold on, I got this on here too. I'm gonna look at it like this here, because I got it on. One of the things, that, like it mentions, is, is you go to losing interest. And the things that you had interest in, like I say you got able to sleep. And then that anxiety and that lashing out, that anger that, uh, that come about. 
usually that same anger get taken out on somebody who might be closest to you. You know, your emotions be all over the place. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard to get to the, the level of calm that you desire. And then you go to thinking about dying. Another thing they had on there is, uh, cause I know myself, I don't like to make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to fail. And then when I sit back and, and if, if it occurs, like I say, you take it as it's something actually wrong with you. Everybody know that people are gonna make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? That's just a natural part of life. But when you desire to be to, for excellence and perfection in everything that you do, and you don't necessarily execute it like that, you look at it as if there's something wrong with you. Then you go to replaying that in your brain over and over again, and then you don't necessarily pull the positives out of the situation. You only gonna focus on the things that you did wrong and the negatives, and then it destroys you. The other thing that you just sit back and realize they call it toggling. Like you can have something where you feel good for a certain period of time, and people might think you're all right, but once you done acclimated yourself to that situation, you just revert back to what you was already feeling already. And from what I'm looking at, they stating that those are some of the most severe forms of depression that exists. Is the uh, the toggling and the perfectionism. Because all it is, is it's just a, it's a mood disorder. It's just thought pattern. I say it usually affects people who think entirely too much. Usually it comes about from a traumatic experience or something that just bring about sadness. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I say, I've been think I've been dealing with it for over half my lifetime. Just to be honest about it, sitting back thinking on it. It's definitely, uh, It's definitely if you've been dealing with it for a period of time, you know how to cover it up. The way nobody ain't gonna think nothing wrong with you. Not to, I mean, well, I put it this way, to that, to that level, to that extent. You can read certain parts where, uh, in the word, we might look at a couple of, uh, you know, especially in songs where David go to talking about how that sorrow had overtook him. You know what I'm saying? To the point, you know, he was drowned under. And sometimes I don't think sit back and we now like I read in Lamentations last night, you know, Jeremiah sat back and said, I'm gonna think on my hope that's in Yah when it come when I sit back and I think about all these things. Cause he said, My strength and my hope is gone. When you go to talk about your strength is gone, you know what I'm saying? You in a real, real bad, you in a real low state, you in a bad spot. Uh, without the Almighty, there's no telling where anybody who would be in that type of situation, which is what we referring to with the brother who took the step in the pathway that he took because he didn't have the almighty. So he didn't have really nothing to lean on or set his hat on, which made it easier for him to take the step that he took and end in his life. You know, the difference between me and him is I asked for death versus actually going to go do it. And to be honest, I haven't had thoughts about death since I was a child, at least since I can remember, at least about six, seven years old. Do you know what I'm saying? Preparations and desire to, to leave here and not be here. You know what I'm saying? I just say like this here because I know uh, sitting back looking at that brother killing himself and then knowing that dealing with a similar type of circumstance, that that's just something that black people have to sit back and discuss and be a little bit more in tuned on and aware of to be able to identify that. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you can just think, you have to know the difference when somebody's sad and when somebody is depressed. Because somebody who is depressed, they can end up doing what he did. And it happens a lot. You know what I'm saying? It happens a lot. It's a, it's a real difficult thing because unless you've experienced it yourself, there's no way that you can relate to it. And you'd have to pick your words and your wisely and deal with somebody who's dealing with that wisely with a little bit more compassion and gentleness. Because if not, you could push them over the edge. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot more. It's, it's a lot real, real prevalent amongst our people. Because, you know, you're going to be sad, but then, you know, sadness don't last forever. You know what I'm saying? You get over it over a period of time and you can move on. Everybody gets sad or even depressed to a certain extent, but that's just regular sadness. But... Severe depression is a whole totally different animal. 
You know what I'm saying? Not nothing to be looked at lightly or neglected. Because just to hear the brother this morning saying, like, you know, saying that the dude, mama was like, I knew something like this was going to happen. Like, she's like, I knew that he was going to do that. So the knowing that they were going to do that, that he was going to do that, that mean people knew that there was an issue and something wrong with him, but nobody took the time to really go see about him and to go check on him and to just be there for him. You know what I'm saying? To the, to the extent that that wouldn't happen. Because sometimes you, ain't, you can't come on the terms of giving them some advice and telling them how they can fix it. You just got to be there for them. You know what I'm saying? Just hear them talk. Just listen to them. You know what I'm saying? Maybe drop words of encouragement here and there. But when that don't happen, usually that person is already isolating themselves. And they just going to keep isolating themselves till what happened to him occurs. You know what I'm saying? Because to us, it's not that we don't look at it with that level of seriousness. You know, Caucasians deal with that stuff a, little, a lot more. So, you know what I'm saying? They go about trying to identify that and being a little bit more cognizant of it. Uh, I think with our people, we don't look at it that way. You know what I'm saying? We are tough, a tough and resilient group of people. You know what I'm saying? But even in that, with that resiliency and that toughness, stuff can come on you and it can be a little bit more than you could take. So, mm. <coughs> let's just mention that that whole.